call our meeting to order for our regular session and you stand to the pledge, please. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do not have a report on closed session this evening. A uh, motion to adopt our agenda, please. Uh, any changes or additions in the agenda? There's uh, two changes. First, uh, 13C, uh, there is a $250 amount excess for meals. It's actually for the substitute teacher, not for meals. Um, and uh, 13H, that is in full. More, which is uh, on minutes on page 11, it should reflect in 1130. All those in favor of the agenda as amended? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consider 
not just the one that was presented. Thank you. Any other public comment on non-agenda items? Yes. Did you turn a card in or? No, I just. Okay, then just okay. please come forward and state your name. I'm Wendy Offield. I talked to you guys at the meeting, I think it was in July or June, but I couldn't make the last one because I was at the pageant of the Masters that night. And as I sat there, I really thought about how sad I was to not be at that meeting, but how glad I was to be at the pageant. And so I came back tonight to just really, I guess, kind of follow up what the gal before me said, is that just really be mindful in the decision because I feel like at that meeting that I sat in, all I heard repetitively was in Irvine, in Capo, in Irvine, in Capo, we're Lagoon Beach and Laguna's been different. I started school here 45 years ago. My kids went through school here. For decades, the calendar has stood as it is and it's been very effective because this community is not every other community like she said. And I also think that you have to factor in the arts, the beaches, all the opportunities there are for students, young to old in this community, to take advantage of why we live in Laguna. Those of us that have lived here long enough have seen a few, I can name two that I can think of that were really terrible decisions by the school board. And I still think their terrible decisions, and one of them really altered the way the schools were for a while. And then I, is what I see, I have my youngest grandkids in school now, I feel like the district in some ways has really gotten back to where it was, particularly when I drive by the high school and the kids there now look like Laguna Beach kids, beach kids. And I just really implore you, I know you're all educated, you're an education board, and I think if you choose based on something that's a trend, a uh, thing in the moment to change the calendar, like the other things in the past, or particularly one of them, poor decisions by the, the board, I really think this is a really uneducated decision. And it's really, I don't know, I don't know all of your backgrounds, but I just can't understand how this even got to this point. And it's clear that a huge portion of the community is not in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Come forward. My name is Everett Wetton. Um, I'm speaking um, also on the calendar change. I've um, a little bit of history. I've lived here since the 60s. Yeah. Um, um, I went through school here. My um, kids went through school here. My, um, there's so many reasons why I think uh, the calendar change is not a good idea. Um, one of them that uh, um, keeps coming to mind is the, um, the employment of the kids at Laguna, uh, whether it's lifeguards uh, under the city um, or the sawdust or uh, the pageant of the masters, um, all those run by um, a lot of kids on their summer jobs. Um, and I've spoken to I'm the GM of the sawdust and um, she said that that if a high school student is not able to see the season through, they're unhirable. Um, and I assume um, that's going to mess the same as the city and the lifeguards uh, and the pageant, where um, I know um, I know the festivals were were a huge employment for me and my brothers growing up, um, as they were for, I'm sure a lot of people in town. Uh, my kids as well, I'm at work for the festivals. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the issues uh, brought up was uh, having a week off at 
Thanksgiving and um, having a clean break at Christmas. Um, and the reason given for that, um, to my understanding, was um, not to have any studying over the winter break. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you push back into Thanksgiving, when you come back from Thanksgiving, you're approaching finals on Christmas. Um, it was just a transfer um, in my mind. It's the same thing, it's the same difference. Um, you're just moving one thing uh, ahead of the other. Um, uh, it also seems like it's, it's, uh, it's affecting such a large group of people um, in a negative way to uh, benefit a small group of people. And um, like everybody else who um, spoke before me, um, I encourage you to strongly consider. Thanks. Anyone else, please, come forward? Hi, my name is Cassie Morgan, and I'm a freshman at the high school. And I actually sat on the last, I actually observed the last board meeting where the calendar was proposed and then it showed the new calendar with recommendations and that got me thinking, were the students notified? Because last year as an eighth grader, we all took a survey of what would you like to see in the new calendar and what would you prefer and what would you not want? And I, as myself, wasn't notified of the new calendar, which I saw didn't include the week off at Thanksgiving, among other things. So I'm asking you, did you notify the students? Because the students, like my mother Sherry Morgan said, the students got a voice, but I don't think the students know about the new proposed calendar. And as a student, I think their voices to the new proposed calendar could be very valuable because this is their school year and it is their summer. Thank you. Anyone else on a non-agenda non item? So we um, move to the next item, recognitions. We have no recognitions this evening. We have reports. Uh, to you okay. As we begin the second week of the 2018-2019 school year, students are finally becoming comfortable with their class schedules and activities. Since homecoming will be on the first week of October, preparations for the dance and proceeding activities are in a full swing. The theme will be revealed this Friday. Auditions for the fall play Romeo and Juliet were held this past weekend. They're still be holding their club rush this Wednesday and their back to school night on Thursday. The top of the world's back to school night is this Wednesday. LBHS's is Thursday, September 20th, and El Moro's is Thursday, September 27th. On behalf of Laguna Beach Athletics, Mr. Neal and athletes are looking forward to their inaugural, inaugural season in the Sunset Conference. In the new league, we will be playing schools such as Corona Del Mar, Newport Harbor, Los Alamitos, Huntington Beach, Marina, Edison, and Fountain Valley. League play will, also, will begin next week. Breakers football is off to a 2-1 start, with their only loss being to the 2018 CF champions, Big Bear High School. An exciting 34-8 win against Dana Hills leaves students excited for this week's home football game against Bellflower High School. Our cross-country teams competed in Palo Alto last weekend, the girls placing first and the boys placing third behind two schools with high state rankings. Girls tennis, golf, and volleyball have started off their seasons playing well. Boys sand volleyball and co-ed surf tryouts are being held throughout this week. Thank you. Oh, and this is Caitlin Gensley. She is the co-student board representative. Uh, yes. Um, so, in consideration of um, continuous improvement, it's one of our goals. We have. Um, I attended over the summer a four-day conference on uh, for new presidents um, through put on by CTA, and we also have trained our site reps um, through our service provider. Um, 
at CTA. She is new. She um, took over the place of Jim Rogers, and her name is Aisha Young. Um, so she came to our meeting yesterday and uh, helped with that and gave us some good information. Um, and then we also, as you all know, we participated in the PLC conferences. And um, I was saying at the end of the conference, when it got down to really practical applications and things, that's when teachers started to have some conversations about that would be a good idea, or that's a good idea, and how would we do that? And that's something we're going to talk about more about PLC. So that real practical application piece kind of was what was interesting and more exciting to us. Um, of course, then all the theory is interesting. It's a good introduction, but this is what we want to put in practice. So, um, so I thought that was a um, that was well received and it was good, you know, particularly at the end. So, of that practical application, um, and then in the spirit of improving relationships and collaboration, um, the Thurston Middle School teachers have put together monthly lunch meetings um, just for the staff to get together and talk, share information, etc. And um, the high school teachers, Summer Selway and Estee and Lynn Gregory, put together monthly meetups. And so they have a whole schedule, lots of fun things to do. Everyone can join in. You guys can all join in too. We're going to meet at TOW um, and do a five mile hike. So you'll get your 10,000 steps in if you can join us this Thursday at 3.15. So I'm planning on going and looking forward to it. And I hope to see you guys there. CSEA, perfect. CSEA had a great start to the school year, and again, uh, I know I mentioned it last time, but I'd like to thank the board and the administration for the inclusion in so many of the classified staff for the first few weeks uh, before school started in all of the professional development. That certainly, you know, the inclusion was wonderful, but more than that, working side by side with the teachers and staff is really important as we move forward. Um, CSEA will be having their e-board training tomorrow off-site, and we will be inviting our site reps for the afternoon. Uh, at this particular time, I am doing the training. I think I've done this enough that that's how it's going to work, but I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bellario especially for uh, sharing in the beginning, uh, now everybody's part of it, the Strength Finders, because we will be using Strength Finders for our training tomorrow and looking at each one of our skills as we are on the grid, so to speak, and what we can do next to bring each school site members to an understanding of what's really happening with CSEA. Right now I have one site that I'm looking for site reps in, but I think that will happen sooner than later, and we'll move forward in a very positive direction for the rest of the year. Do you have any representatives from organizations, school power, PTA, to speak to us tonight? Board members? Oh, so I haven't had anything except the welcome back for breakfast. And I just wanted to thank Victoria and her team that did it. It was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. And it was nice to see all the staff and teachers together. Ditto. 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 Well, PTA Council had that first meeting and, uh, before the PTA's meeting, and they thought because we did everything online, they were so good they came to the membership report and talk about some of their initial plans for the year, things that they're doing in September, October. So it's, even though it was Thursday the 6th, they were already underway because they were doing summer work. So it's good. And that's the only thing so far. <laughs> I'm boring. Well, um, I'm ready or not, here they come. So, uh, but we were ready. A real special thanks to all staff. I mean, it's, uh, as we know, um, many folks don't go home over the summer and instead we're uh, busy prepping. And um, the facilities uh, look amazing. Uh, our uh, technology, um, for the most part, not without a hitch. Um, far better than we've ever had in the past, thanks to Mike and his team for all the work there. Um, Lisa and her team. And, and, uh, Victoria for the welcome back breakfast and all the things that go along with that, which is an amazing amount of fun. And then uh, Alicia and her team and uh, the principals for really having uh, what I would say two really strong days of, of professional development for our teachers. And, uh, so the, the students uh, came on the campus and a lot of smiles, and uh, especially at the elementary school level. And I'm always amazed when you get to the high school. 
Um, there's you know a thousand kids going all sorts of different directions, but when they're all in, they're all in seats. You know, and uh, so kudos to the staff there and, and getting our schedules up and running. And there are a lot of real positive feedbacks uh, from the counselors uh, around the master schedule and how great uh, things we seem to be looking this year. So again, just thank the team, thanks to the administrators and uh, all the staff for uh, a really smooth start and welcome. So several uh, of you have already mentioned um, the welcome back breakfast, and, and we did have a little change in the schedule with our classified employees, so we had more people back for professional development this year, um, I think which was helpful. Um, we uh, had our bigger and better health fair this year mm -hmm. um, and kicked off the wellness program. So we had so many employees that wanted to participate in biometric screenings that we're actually going to have to schedule a second date so we can get everyone in. So um, we're looking forward to that and also um, expanding our committee uh, so that we have representatives from every site. Um, some sites are already up and running planning events and, and things that I think are really uh, uh, good for the school culture and also will benefit other schools when they all come together and share ideas. Can they share some of those and then we get the updates? Mm -hmm. so we can sure. Yeah. Thank you for the overview. I'm hoping for the board um, to, on the last agenda item to possibly give us some direction. <clears throat> regarding Proposition 5 and our position to it, uh, I gave a sample resolution in front of all of you, or do we want to just write a letter to it's two questions I have that I'm hoping we can get some direction on as a staff. Okay. And then uh, auditors are here, things are going very well, and um, uh, I want to thank all the, everyone's involved in the audit, so the full front district office and of course the finance team are doing a great job there. Thank you, President Baker. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, instructional services staff. They've, they've been hustling, um, particularly Dr. Mayberry, for not only onboarding, but really helping us accomplish student confirmation for um, Yadi and Yvonne for doing such a fantastic job with um, just personalizing support for each and every family. Um, and then to Dr. Keller and the student support specialists for, offer, for offering suicide prevention training just right up until the end of school and um, offering additional support for staff. Thank you. I left one thing out that I think is on PTA Council. The minute they had all four principals come and all the leadership team come, so they each got to introduce themselves and speak about their schools, and I thought that was really important to the staff, because I did make a compliment about the, what a good team we have, what a strong leadership. So it was, it was good for them, the PTA presidents to be able to take that information back to their sites. Next, we have a public hearing. So I open the public hearing. Okay. Um, ensuring availability of textbook and instructional materials for 2018-19 school year. Certification and provision of standards aligned instructional materials for Ed Codes section 6119 and 6422B. This notice of this public hearing was posted on August 27th, and there's a resolution coming later in May for action. So this is the time to receive input on the public hearing. So we close the public hearing. Our next item is our consent calendar. Uh, item H has already been removed and corrections were made under A and C. Are there any items that board members would like to pull? I'm just going to pull A to Okay. Anything else? Any public comment on the consent calendar? So we don't need any questions. We have a motion, please, for. A, 1, and 3, and B through M, taking out H. B. Okay, sorry, thanks for the next day. <laughs> um, all in favor of the consent calendar? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I make one comment afterwards that I noticed that um, the cost of registration for the conferences had the department heads put it on. I know we don't have any complaints on that, but I would like them to make it a little more available. If <laughs> not, for other districts that are having a lot more struggles, I might. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. information yeah. items this evening. Uh, I have uh, oh, sure. to do. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Okay. Do you have to do A2? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Abstain. Thank you. 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 Th
you. Thank you. Now we have our information item. Uh, recognition of the Vinavish Unified School District as a no place for hate district. Dr. Debo. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. President Vickers, board, cabinet, colleagues, thank you for tonight. Tonight is a great celebration. So we will speak to you briefly, but it's important, a great topic. We're excited to be here tonight. So let's dive right in. Uh, about this time, uh, in uh, the 2017, a group of teachers uh, brought um, the need to us. Uh, they've been listening to students, staff, um, athletics, they wanted to find a solution that would help to meet some of our needs. And some of the students were saying um, to me as a teacher, I don't feel like my voice matters. Um, I am different and people make fun of me. You wouldn't believe what people say in the quad. I feel like I am not accepted for who I am on the inside. I'm afraid to be who I am. So some of these things really struck me as uh, disconcerting and they needed to be addressed. So we got together in the spring of 2017 and started discussing how we can tackle these issues and make these kids feel like they're included. A great thing happened, this, well, disconcerting, but uh, one of our students responded in the, in the perfect way possible. Uh, we have our link crew uh, orientation every year, and uh, I train the link crew leaders, and they get a group of you guys um, and they each get a group of eight to ten students. Um, they meet with them in classrooms and they talk with them and play games with them for about two hours and then they take them on a tour. Part of that tour is that the students wear costumes uh, and you guys pick out what those costumes are. They clear everything with me. So they get dressed up and they go on their tour. They have the campus all to themselves. Uh, and one uh, group was out and they, one of the students uh, made a disparaging comment, an offensive remark actually, regarding one of the costumes. And my link crew leader grabbed the group and she said, we're going back in the classroom. So they were out and about on the tour. She took the kids back into the classroom and said, we need to address something. We don't say those things on this campus. And I didn't know about it. She told me about it afterwards. And I said, I'm so proud of the way you handled that. Um, she stood up and she said to the student, we just don't say those things on this campus. It's not okay. Even if you were joking, it's not okay. It's an offensive remark. And they went back out on the tour, but she was shaking because it was hard for her to do the right thing, but she did the right thing. And so I was so, so proud of her. So those are the kinds of things that are happening because of this initiative on our campus. Kids are feeling like they have a voice and they can stand up for students. So I was really proud. So here's how we got here today. Um, so as we talked about, teachers were the catalyst of this uh, district committee. They took, they decided to take collective agreement in the summer of 2017, I believe, over Gelato, right? Uh, okay, um, this is our, last year was our pilot year. Uh, that includes a pledge from each site and three activities. And last year, we received um, a recognition for, to be no place for any district. We're really proud. And this is all, you know, student driven and we're moving forward, we're getting the kids more involved. So I know Piper's on that committee um, and they're meeting next week and they're going to help in the planning of the activities. Last year it was largely the teachers uh, and this year we're really getting the students involved. That's something that ADL really supports and wants us to, to do. So we're looking forward to getting their voice in, and getting their ideas in the planning process. One of the activities that we did last year, we watched uh, the TED Talk, Chinamanda Ngozi Adichie's famous TED Talk, The Danger of the Simple Story. Uh, it's very moving if you haven't seen it. Um, and so we watched that TED Talk, we discussed the stereotypes and the danger of that one story and basing your beliefs on just one simple story. Um, we had the students do some interactive stuff. We talked about racism and bigotry. Um, and the students always have to reflect on uh, the experience. So. They did that, they did some writing, and we discussed it as a class. So it was a very effective lesson, and I think the, the feedback that I got from the students was we were finally talking about this in class. They were relieved, really relieved, that we're having these discussions, so that was great. So with that, I'd like to introduce 
Eric and St. Peter to you. And um, before I do that, I think I, I do really want to acknowledge Don Honeycutt for her leadership in this initiative. Kristen Cowles is taking over this year. We're really excited. Thank you for being here. We're, we're just pleased to have these two extraordinary women help lead this charge. So thank you. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Peter, who plans on pushing his own buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you uh, for uh, letting me join you this evening. So I'm Peter Levy. I'm the regional director for the ADL here in Orange County and Long Beach. And I remember it was just over a year ago when we had a meeting right in this room talking about uh, anti-bias, bigotry, and bullying program and what that can do to help create healthy, safe, sustainable environments on campuses. And the good fortune was my intern last summer uh, was a, a graduate from Laguna Beach uh, School District, um, Shira Alakumra. Al no one can pronounce her last name. Alakumra. Yes, that Shira. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and she was really able to articulate from a student experience, just graduating two years before, just how much simple things on campus uh, can make students, whether or not they're women, teens, uh, Jews, Muslims, uh, race, creed, color, religion, feel like outsiders and not, and not belong. And so it was really, uh, it's very poignant talking to teachers, administrators, and students themselves about the importance of it. So let me just tell you a little bit about the ADL so you know who we are. Uh, ADL started 105 years ago in 1913. Uh, the mission then is the same mission today, which was to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to fight for fair and just treatment for all people. It's always been that any bigotry and discrimination that's out there, you have to fight all bigotry and discrimination, not just for one group. Take on all groups. And uh, going back to 1985, started the, um, so we're an anti-hate organization. We fight in a whole variety of ways, but our proactive work is through education. And in that spirit, in 1985, we, oh, okay. all right, I might have cut out a, all right. So the World of Difference Institute, <laughs> uh, the World of Difference Institute uh, began in 1985 in Boston which is really to say not just make a world of difference, but we have a world of difference. And how are we going to, and it's really our uh, education based on diversity, pluralism, implicit bias, uh, such that every student knows that they belong in their school. Uh, so it began in 1985, so we've been doing it for over a generation uh, nationally, and it touches you know, millions of students every year. Uh, and right now we're actually in an effort to try and sort of expand our footprint uh, of offering our anti-bias, anti-bullying, anti-bigotry education. Um, so it's really great to be working with uh, the Lagoon Beach School District in this capacity. Uh, sort of the goal, I might have, somehow it didn't, it's supposed to be revealed one box at a time. So, <laughs> That's um, yeah, it's, a, it's a fun technology piece. Right. So the goals are is simply right, to promote safe, respectful, inclusive learning environments. Right. For everyone knows that they belong, no matter what their diversity is. To build understanding of value and something. It's all and benefit. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. Uh, right. To improve <laughs> intergroup relations. Right. To eradicate bias, bigotry, racism, and bullying and to encourage personal responsibility. We do this mainly through two programs, the No Place for Hate program, which is where schools take ownership themselves and try and bring all the stakeholders together, teachers, students, and ideally parents and administrators, to really not just sign the pledge, which is generic, about standing up and becoming an ally to those who are alienated, but also to then to look, address, assess what's going on in our community, what's happening in our school that we want to address, and then how are we going to do that in a way that is engaging out of the entire campus in an interactive fashion. Uh, we also have our programming that is facilitated by ADL professionals, educators. Um, we actually have a couple of those coming up of doing some teacher training, some implicit bias training for teachers, as well as with administrators and people working in the office trying to address particular issues about LGBTQ inclusion uh, and welcoming in the school environments. Um, 
And that's all part of our World of Difference Institute, which I'm really happy and uh, proud to be a part of. And, you know, then when schools participate, what they get designated as a no place for hate school, we hopefully, you know, just like your CIF banners or whatever that you'll have every year, a no place for hate banner. And yours are coming, so you'll be able, as we go into the school year, uh, you know, have a special ceremony on the being designated no place for hate schools. And it's really wonderful that all the schools within the district were uh, uh, successful and complete, really wonderful programming last year. Uh, these would also be one of the other also, but uh, <laughs> these are just some of our samples of also, you know, we provide a lot of, you know, free curriculum to teachers. Uh, that is all about the type of work that we're doing about, um, well, you can see what's up there. You know, right now I've been setting off to teachers uh, about Colin Kaepernick and kneeling and what are First Amendment rights and how does that work and what is athletes and activism and, and the history of that in this country because there's a lot, there's a huge context. But anyway, we really try to take what's relevant and, uh, and contemporary and part of the discussion that helps drive the agenda to create safe, sustainable campus environments where every student and every family knows that they're a full part of it. And that's really what uh, ADL programming is all about. And we're really happy to partner with the school district and with your wonderful teachers and staff to make that possible. That is all my information. You can also just Google ADL Orange County. You'll find me that way also. And uh, so, questions? Yes, do you have any questions for us? I just want to say thank you. I think this yeah. is an awesome program, especially in light of what's current times current, yes, currently occurring. And I just, um, yeah, I just think it is so important that that this is front and center for everyone. I think it's 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 absolutely core to social emotional development and becoming the best person you can be. And I just think that the fact that we're supporting this is is it just it's just yet another indication that we do love this. I agree with what Penny said. I think that's, uh, and we, I think it was good that we took so much in one year and then we got all of our schools involved. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we had, I know tonight they're down at the city council doing a, a kindness resolution. Um, but we've been looking at that for years. We started uh, at elementary schools and then moved it up. And to me, this is just a more, um, set, sort of a more vigorous mm -hmm. way to move, to really take a stand. and. I mean, we're still doing all the kindness activities. It has made, it has made a difference in the students in this district, and this will make an even bigger difference. But systemic, it is. It's, and I agree with you. I think right now it's vital. We need to be, we return to civility. We, and it and it builds upon what we have. So whether the kindness and the character and the upstander, and it just builds on that and gives relevant contemporary information and having a child come up here with a lot of the last people share the things he came home and discussed with us fascinated by um, but he really wanted to go that's where when he was gonna turn his child into his school. And we're signing the pledge tomorrow, uh, the resolution of respect for high school. So it will be displayed on all the bulletin boards in our hallways. So we're excited about that. So that's happening tomorrow. Is it in, uh, when you were talking about the one student that you did the, was that in English classes that, or did, was it just in your classes? Um, the TED Talk? Uh -huh. We did that in all the English classes. All so we did. So we, all the students who are affected by it, because that's one of the thing, the requirements right. for ADL and getting one of the activities approved is that all the students have to be involved. So we did it in the English classes because all the students have to have English. We did it on the same day. Um, so they were all impacted on the same day. We just wanted those conversations to happen. Uh, you know, at lunch and, you know, during the break, so, yeah. And social studies did quite a few of the acti activities as well, so, yeah. And please know I'm available to anyone, right, board members, community members, uh, any questions or particularly if there's any issues about, or incidents about bias and bigotry, to help sort those out, just ask Elisa to go to high school. Try and work with them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we have a few action items this evening. Our first item 15, approval of resolution 18-07 for Ed Code section 6119, ensuring availability of textbooks and instructional materials for the 18-19.
and certification of provisions of standards aligned with such material. And that's not to be followed. Yes. Uh, so now that we've held the hearing, um, all instructional materials are in place. We have a set of workbooks that are on order uh, for El Moro, but they are on order and on their way. Everybody else has everything that they need. Any public comment on this action item? Any more questions? Motion to so, second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Piper Warner. Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Vickers. Yes. Mrs. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Monaghan. Yes. Mrs. Wolf. Yes. Thank you. Uh, item 16, approval of 2017-2018 unaudited actual report. Mr. Dixon. presentation just showing the highlights of the report itself and if there's any specific questions in the report that you have on we'll those at the end. So here's a reminder of our 18 month budget cycle, the steps that we look at, the milestones we have to meet and the reporting requirements for you. We just met the uh, classroom expenditure threshold of 25%, uh, a little higher than last year, so we got 0.88% above the requirement, which is good. And we've met the NCLB now the SF requirement. Um, the indirect cost rate as calculated through our SACS form is 7.46% and we'll submit that to CDE for um, proposing fees at 2019-2020. And we'll talk about the GAN limit in a separate item about the need to increase it. Here's a snapshot of our general fund big picture. You can see our revenues and um, you can see everything unrestricted and restricted. Um, this is a slight increase from what we had projected in our second interim report. So it's good, and as we have just discussed in the past, that's the result of us closing the encumbered purchase orders were not the full amount was used, and that's why this is typically higher at the unlimited actual report versus second interim from the fiscal year. You see our total ending fund balance for the year, including unrestricted and restricted, is a little over $9.2 million. Um, as a reminder, the components of the of the uh, ending fund balance. Um, they're up here, but they're also a more detailed breakout is on page 9 of 28 of the actual report itself. The non spendable includes our revolving cash and uh, some uh, prepaid expenditures from the capital last year. We have our restricted programs, the largest being routine restricted maintenance. Um, committed is the 500000 for Fund 17 that we took action on last meeting. And then the assigned is a potential one time and some other small amounts that are included in there. And then just of course the reserve for economic uncertainties is the one at the bottom there. So with that, I'd be happy to, oh, and here's the uh, fund balances for all of our other funds. Um, you can see up there, the special reserve will be revised the first item to show the $500,000 additional contribution. And uh, the other contributing factors for our basic aid differential are the fund 40s. CIP for the resource property reserve, which are shown at the bottom. Public comment on this item? Any more questions? Any motions, please? So moved. Second. Discussion. Good. Jeff, we don't include um, on that compensation of 55.88, we don't include benefits, which would make it a much higher. There are a few things that are excluded from that calculation that's on the SACS form in there, but yes, it's... So that, that has changed then, I mean, it, I, I'm asking if it did it change, did benefits used to be included because the, the amount was higher. Yep, and I'm, I'm, th and I'm sure thinking, I'm around. Yeah, you probably were born then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that it used to be that the, the requirement was a much higher amount. So I, and it, so... Yes, a much higher percentage, percentage or percentage. Percentage. percentage? You're saying it was more than 55 percent? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that districts were expected to spend it, but benefits were included. So it's I think different it's an asset. Yeah, it's different from the unified districts to our elementary school districts. Yeah. Too. Okay. So that's been one of the, the challenges. Many of many districts actually are unable to meet that 55 percent threshold. In fact, are 
Because <laughs> because there's a lot there are no sub exclusions that okay. um, it has to be directly in, in the classroom expenditure um, so yeah there are sub exclusions okay. that that's why it, it's that way also we have um, you know our budgeting includes basic aid reserves we manage our funds differently than the revenue districts do as well so um, if you look school services actually provides a chart at all of their workshops the budget workshops to show the number of districts that are not meeting that threshold and as a honestly it's a, it's a fairly artificial number they just landed on years ago and just never to change it update it so um, one of the largest factors one of the best decisions i think we've made is setting up the FERC and the cip because those expenditures do not count in that calculation so as we have those major facilities costs that's not included in that whereas if we threw that in we would not be meaning Question that I just <laughs> I needed to know. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Again, and I was um, complimentary to your home department in speaking with the auditor of how much information we provide to help them understand our budget, our finances, but also what we're showing, particularly in 17 and 40, because we are basically self funded yes. and how expensive any capital projects are. Good stewards of that. Yeah. Yes. Complimentary back to the your office and your your whole team. Yes, he's he's come in with all smiles. Which is quite <laughs> optimistic on the uh, audit itself, and he even got a few jokes out of an auditor. So that's a roll call vote. No, I'm not sure. I think provisional vote. Anyone else? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Uh, item 17, action item 17, uh, approval resolution 18-08, increase the 2017-18 GAN limit by $3,058,699.35 and adoption of the 2017-18 and 2018-19 district appropriations subject to GAN limits. Mr. Dixon. Yes, yes, I'm going to elevate you to Dr. Dixon. <laughs> 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 no, you're not allowed. Uh, is there a man named Mr. Dan? Is that yeah. what to go with? Yes. She was torturing this us with this? This is a proposition uh, four from 1979. Okay. Uh, limit established for all state and local public agencies. Um, the limit increases each year, um, but if the corporations don't increase as fast as the limit, then we need to increase our limit. The school district, which because our property tax growth usually will always exceed the end limit growth, uh, we need to increase our limit. And what happens from this point is we have 45 days to submit a letter to the Department of Finance telling them about the increase in our limit so that the state can reduce their limit by the exact same amount. So it works out as a wash essentially for the state, okay. right? It's required for us so that we're not repaying back our taxes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They make it a little complicated. Out there. The state, I just want to know. Thankfully, the form that does the calculation is yes. automated. It's okay. in one of the Excellent. Yeah. Think about how it wasn't automated. <laughs> <laughs> I think about how you probably got it wrong. So yeah. 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 Public comment on this item? Any board questions? No motion, please. I'll move the second. Um, you have Action item 18, resolution 18-09, temporary interfund transfer of $6 million from the special reserve for non-capital outlay fund 17 to the general fund, just fund one. Mr. Dixon. Uh, this is a low cash flow time for us as we're waiting for our first large property tax receipt of the year. So we want to borrow from ourselves from fund 17 temporarily. Um, as soon as we get the large property tax receipt, um, we will come back to the board with the information item in December, around December 19th, um, to repay those funds back in the funds that we've come to show. Board of Public Comment? Board of Public Comment? Questions? Okay. Motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Again, thank you. Yeah, that was. <laughs>
Oh, we're the next. Two of us. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate you making sure that that is called out of the Mr. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Appreciate you appreciate the zero percent interest too. Yeah, we do. <laughs> this is a roll call, please. Diana Warner. Yes. Mrs. Biggers. Yes. Mrs. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Marvin. Yes. Mrs. Wolf. Yes. Action item 19, approval to purchase forecast analytics in an amount not to exceed 17500 Mr. Dixon. Thank you, President Rickers. Uh, this is a very robust software uh, that does a lot of things for us. It helps us consolidate where most of our data analysis will come from for both educational reasons and fiscal reasons. Uh, forecast, you can see in the board item itself, I list just some of the features. Staff has already demoed the product, gone through training, and um, we feel that not only can it help enhance our reporting to you, the governing board, and our staff, but it also help us to simplify a lot of our monthly financial reports that we do um, for our community. So it's, it's, um, we feel it's going to improve the efficiency for us, but also give us more meaningful data in a uh, more expedited fashion for our uh, curriculum staff as well, so that we can identify um, where we're putting our resources, resources and if it's having the most effective or best effect. I just have one that says access to data comparisons to other like districts. So that means it's 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 in some place where we can we can we, create, we can call that out to yes, and you can create as many of those like district scenarios as you as want. So a lot of them. Why would you just be talking about that? It's so awesome. Sure. What other do other districts use this? Yeah, there's about fifty in the state of California now. They're moving more into California, but it's nationwide. But it's also nationwide. They have the data in the system. It yeah, connects. They pull it straight model. from California Department of Ed, and then we upload our general ledger data to them. Any public comment? Board questions? We were out of words for the other. <laughs> Motion, please. So I make a second. Any discussion? I just think this is going to be simpler. Sometimes when we ask them questions, we're going to make them hear that they can. <laughs> I really want to ask them this. <laughs> right, looking for consensus, so there might be something simpler, especially right. like districts and stuff to be able to answer questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for finding mm -hmm. the new report back on this and how we look at it. I'm sure you're going to see mm -hmm. some of the charts eventually in some of the presentations. Yeah. Don't get lost in the new charts. Yeah. Don't get lost in the new charts. Hi, Jerry. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? For um, action item 20, approval board policies first read. These are the policies that we did in our policy workshop. So, yeah, we'll go through them one by one. No. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. We really did that. We did that. Um, <laughs> again, I appreciate uh, the board and their work on these. Uh, obviously, there's quite a few, uh, a lot of updates. Laws change, the uh, policies also have to be updated. So you'll see uh, in the agenda uh, the policy number, uh, description of what the policy as well as notes whether it was a new policy or policy that was uh, adjusted for a new law, um, or in order it was something that was, there was an update, not necessarily for the law, but an update that we need to the law. So um, one of the bylaws that we I had a lot of discussion about at the actual meeting. Um, the workshop was related to bylaw number 9150, uh, which is on page 261, and that was specific to the student board member. Um, and uh, unfortunately, for many years, we haven't been um, following this process, and I appreciate we have uh, Piper and Caitlin here now, um, and have a process that we should be utilized to bring them up to this commission. So you'll see uh, in the third paragraph, uh, it states to enhance communication between the board and the student body and to encourage student involvement in district affairs. The board shall include at least one board, at least one student board member selected in accordance with procedures approved by the board. Um, so there was a lot of discussion at the, the workshop around this. This is the language that um, I'm recommending that the board move forward with as it relates to the first read. Uh, but obviously, you can have some other discussion and decisions. So, other than that, it's presented for first read. Not necessarily action. This is step one of two. Unless you decide to waive the first reading, go ahead and go forward. 
public comment? You're not voting, but you get direction on it. On any other line. Yeah. Okay, so we'll vote in the motion. In a motion to the second round. Appreciate we covered them all at one meeting, so we just kind of I'm going to use the word grind, but we're going to grind. Oh, it's on. okay. Yeah. It's a grind. And then I just feel like we're we are doing we're practicing what our policies say. So I like the my favorite thing. And one of the things I did have a conversation with Piper. She wasn't able to obviously be at the workshop. Um, I don't blame her. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that we discussed a little bit is the process we utilize this year. So I don't know if Piper and Caitlin have anything. Share around that topic. If not, no big deal. But I mean, we discussed a little bit together, so I'm not sure. Okay. So this year it was a lot more formal. Dr. Allman presented it to all of the juniors. Last year, and there was an application which included letters of recommendation and personal statements, and then two interviews um, with administrators from the school, and then with uh, Dr. Gloria and Mrs. Weber. And yeah, I think two people than I, but it's a lot more professional and formal from the past where it was we would just be chosen. Well you truly have an interest in this. Yes. We did talk about potentially having uh, in accordance with uh, procedures approved by the board, one of the uh, directions that we believe might be a better way to go, uh, Ms. Weber and I is to create um, not a administrative regulation because it wouldn't be it would be more like an addendum process that we would attach to this. And um, I think it would be helpful to include both Piper and Caitlin in the discussion of how to go about creating that and bring that forward um, to the board at a, at a future date. Obviously, they're seated now, so we have some time to have that discussion. And then we can bring it to the board for a uh, discussion of both if it's part of the that you would approve it. Uh, but I really feel appreciate the opportunity to, to, to work with us all uh, to just build that time. I agree. I would support that. Nice and Representing, and, you re and, I, and I noticed in your report tonight you gave all of the back school nights representing beyond just the high school as a student of the district. So that'll be another addition to to us. So we need a, a vote then to move these forward for second read. Um, Piper? Yes. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very supportive. All those tonight. Uh, our last agenda item, item 21, board member requests for items for the next meeting, requests for information for general comments. Thank hey, you. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, I'd like to ask for what would be the most effective, mm -hmm. if it's a resolution or if it's a letter, what do you think would be most effective? The re resolution was crafted for school services in California, and that was their, they were asking us to have pass a resolution, so mm -hmm. I would believe Resolution would be most effective. We could do a letter in addition to the resolution, mm -hmm. or yeah. we can do none of the above. Is, there, is there a time mm -hmm. issue? Just before the election. Oh, you, put this, oh, okay. you put it on as it will come to the next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the resolution. I'm just yeah. for clarification. We're talking about top five. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We're just making yeah. up yeah. resolutions now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have a resolution at the beginning. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Stress that enough. And also, I didn't realize that Mars got a tattoo. So I'm 
missed that. So good play, Martha. You will be missed. She still did set the best course she was. I wanted to bring up, we had a request at the at the last meeting there. I did when Shadi was kind of making the presentation, similar to what she's doing. Well, she asked us to come to the council tonight, but I don't know. Uh, in talking to Dr. Gloria, we have been doing so much for so long, uh, directed toward kindness at all of our school sites. So, what is the feeling of the board in general? I mean, we have, I think we have her coming to make a presentation, but it's, I mean, it's not for us to add something. I mean, right. is it, do we, but I, I mean, do we need to do that? Or, I don't know. Do know? Even no. though I support her mm -hmm. in this program, yeah, I just so think we we're doing what works within the district. That we, I mean, I mean, the reality is that she wants to get but she's the kindest lady in TW. Or, 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 I, I don't know what we're doing. I'll just but, offer that she can come and do it. Okay. Like any, with any public comment, right. she can come so do it during the presentation. She, she, but I know to look at some of our so right. old videos and she can. Which, and she has become more familiar with a lot of the things that we've been doing over the years. Some of it is it's not new information to us. And I felt that her wanting to come was to present something that, that was lacking. <laughs> and then the other is, I think we all received the email. Um, so I think we need to respond to Sherry Morgan's request that that we forward. And I'm not any uh, any of us aren't going to do that. One to one another. But she's asking that we start the process over again. So I think I felt the way the emails came to us. You all got those emails, right? That we need to, in other words. I felt to get the consensus of the oh, board okay. that oh, yeah. I don't support reading gas information. So we can, I, don't know. I think this is appropriate to yeah, say. Well, that's just there's no interest in the board bill at this point in time. I think it's more appropriate we don't interest in the yeah. 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 It's been about a year that we've been actively working on that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about the comment on change? This isn't based on comments tonight. This is based on an email I was saying we need to start, we need to like throw the game. Oh, I I, I, right. no, no, I, I, I understood that. Also, I just thought about the student voice memos. We didn't, we haven't gone back and shown the students all the different students were in school. Yeah, that's what I mean. So that has, they were I just want to make sure that that's pretty clear. When they were surveyed, they were provided that they came in right. the committee right. Right, they saw that the county would be correct. That was part of the survey. It was the first right. page, first page of the survey. Okay. And also, all people selected the top two reasons as to why. Right, right. right. If they were in favor of why, uh, it was all from the students' main uh, responses that I was pulled into. So, the Thanksgiving was not something that was one that was ranked, but not the other ones ranked. Sure. Because I was absent. You're why I have done this for 12 years, and I would do it longer if I could, because I'm so impressed with who you are. Okay, I think that's, um, I have one more, two, two other things to comment. I shared with uh, Dr. Gloria both of these things. Um, the, an article I read about the American Pediatric Association encouraging all pediatricians to make sure by the time a child is age two that the parents have been encouraged about the importance of play. Mm -hmm. So it's like circling back to all this, in other words, not every minute of the day that we still have a structure to, to, to learn something and to go to the You can practice. <laughs> you can <laughs> practice. <laughs> so, but, uh, practice. But back to that concept of their play is at work and how important it is for creativity and problem solving and all the skills that are needed in the current day. And so I thought that was really interesting for pediatricians to make sure that they spoke to new parents about that, about actually just play. Unstructured time. Unstructured by play. You can go outside and play and leave us alone. I think <laughs> the fact that you have to call it unstructured time now yeah. so just play. What are they <laughs> That's like, <laughs> Chris is trying to play. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just saying. <laughs> like, let's play with John. Let's play with John. And the other was an article that I gave him. A woman wrote a book about it. It's about spaces and designing spaces for children. And what it referenced, I thought was interesting in there, was 
the failure of the open spaces, the schools and like the open yeah, spaces the that we have at Top of the World in Thurston and yeah. Calgary in the, in the 70s, and houses. they were just the thing to do, and they quickly found out that it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly for the noise of chaos. Yeah. 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 So it was yeah. a greater concept. That doesn't work either. <laughs> so I think, again, it's like, so, uh, what, what struck me about that is that we try really hard, and sometimes we get criticism for it. I heard the, the words like candy. I mean, but in education, you're trying to continue to improve, and things come along, and you try them out. But the, but the best part of that is when you analyze it and say, this isn't working, and so you fix it, or you stop doing it. But it isn't that, that you know ahead of time what's not going to work. Right. Every, everything deserves there. a course correction. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Necessary. Can I ask you one more thing? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so thank you for including us and thank you for all of your working so diligently on the book's final getting ready for all the and I'm not sure if everyone sees you in your taking in all that input you do and you're putting it down and you're working just trying to get the flow chart or the representation down so it's really, really impactful and your focus on this. my ability to watch you focus on that was an awe Thank you for all of what you put into. Yes, <laughs> all you put into all that table all the time on making sure that everyone has what they need. So I'm grateful for you. It was you were so intense. So thank you for allowing us to be here. I could say this, sir. Do you match your answer? Do you switch over to what I'm working on? Like this final, working on her desk. Do you have anything? Discussion items. Well, in as the year goes on, if you have something, we should bring it up and be excited to discuss it and like us to consider. Make sure you write it down because we're so interested in it. It might just go right out of that. So you want to make sure you have it. Uh, uh, our next meeting is Tuesday, September 25th. Have we made the location? No, it's still decided to do it here. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So I'll go to the second. Favor. Uh, I favor. Yeah. Yeah.